Okay, we're going to look at separable differential equations. So by definition, separable differential equations are those that can be written in the form dy by dx equals f of x times g of y. In other words, a function of x times a function of y. So let's look at some examples and some non-examples. So for example, dy by dx equals x squared times y cubed. So that would be an example. dy by dx equals e to the x plus 3 times sine x, where we have e to the x plus 3 uh, grouped together, um, times cosine of y. So there's an example of a separable differential equation. So now let's look at some non-examples. So one non-example would be dy by dx equals x plus y. So it's pretty easy to write down something that's not a separable differential equation. Now we can take that for inspiration and write down a similar one. So how about e to the x plus sine y. So that also is not separable. Okay, I'll clean up the board and then we'll talk about how to solve these in general. Okay, so there's a nice strategy for solving separable differential, differential equations. So we'll start with the equation derivative of y with respect to x equals this function f of x times this function g of y. So let's see, the first step is you would divide both sides by g of y. So we're leaving out all sorts of hypotheses as to when this is, is possible and what interval the solution is valid on. So, but you can guess what's going on here if you're dividing by g of y, then something's happening when this function is equal to zero. Um, times dy dx equals f of x. And from here, we'll take the antiderivative of both sides with respect to x. So that'll give us the antiderivative of 1 over g of y dy dx dx equals the antiderivative of f of x dx. But now if we look in here, and if you recall from um, integration calculus, uh, this term looks like we've already done some sort of substitution of variables on a integral where we <coughs> got that dy was dy dx dx. So that allows us to write this entire left-hand side as the antiderivative of 1 over g of y dy. So if we're doing this properly, we would go through these steps and recognize that this looks like the substitution of another integral. But there's a much faster way to do this, and that is to start at the very beginning step and move all of the x's to one side and all of the y's to one side, considering this dx and this dy term as being separate. So that would give us dy over g of y equals f of x dx. And so it's a bit sketchy to, to break up the derivative this way, but it will get us to the right spot. So now if we take the antiderivative of both sides, we'll end up with the same kind of thing that we got over there. And so this is just a bit faster, um, but will give us the correct solution. Okay, so let's look at this uh, initial value problem. So we have dy by dx is equal to x over y, and then our initial condition is at the value x equals 0, we have y equals 2. So following our fast strategy that we just outlined, we can see that we have y times dy equals x times dx, which gives us one half y squared equals one half x squared plus a constant after we've taken this antiderivative. Okay, so you might ask why we did a constant integration on the right hand side and not on the left hand side. Well, the truth is, is we could have done a constant integration on both sides but those would have combined to another constant of integration and since they're all just constants we can absorb them together as um, we have here. So now let's multiply both sides of this equation by 2 and let's see what we get. So that'll give us y squared equals x squared plus 2 times the constant 
But again, since this constant is arbitrary, to be determined by the initial value, we can absorb this 2 into the constant. So that means our general solution is of the form y squared equals x squared plus some constant. And you might say, well, I haven't taken a square root here yet. And that's because if I take a square root, I'm going to have to decide whether it's the positive square root or the negative square root. And that's all going to depend on the initial condition. And we want to keep this as general as possible. So now, let's look at the initial condition. So that's y of 0 equals 2. So if y of 0 equals 2, if I plug 0 in here, I get y squared equals c. So here I have, <clears throat> so plug um, 0, 2 into this equation and we'll get 2 squared equals c, but that means c equals 4. And so that gives us y squared plus, sorry, equals x squared plus 4, or y equals the square root of x squared plus 4. Where I know that I can take the positive square root because I'm getting a positive output for this y value. Okay, good. So this is the final answer.